So you've created your skeleton, you've checked all the rotations, they're all fine. They'll move exactly how you want them to. Now we need to get the mesh to move with the skeleton. So there are various options available to you to do this. So we're just going to select the root joint, select the mesh, and we're going to go to skin, bind skin, smooth bind, and open the options. Just reset these. So again, in Maya 2013, in the recent extension uh, updates, there's a new bind method called heat map. If I, if I set that. Now, this calculates the fall off from each joint to each vertex, sort of differently to the traditional ways. It does take a little bit longer, but it gives a much nicer um, result. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to demonstrate this, but then I'll go back to the classic way for those people who aren't using the most up-to-date version of Maya. So basically, we just set that to heat map. We want to bind it to the joint hierarchy because we've only selected the root joint. We could set it to selected joints. I'm going to change maximum influences to maybe two for now, just so we can uh, restrict how many joints influence each vertex. And the drop off rate, I'm going to set that to 10, which just keeps the influence closer to the joints. So I'm going to click apply, it'll come up with some sort of warning, but then we'll, uh, we'll just demonstrate uh, the result we get with this. I'll pause the video while it does it because it does take a minute just to run through. Blah, blah, blah. Yep. Click continue and I'll just pause. So that is done. So let's look at the results of using heat map. Now, the shoulders and the fingers are notoriously bad when it comes to weighting. You rotate the shoulder and the area under here will collapse. But by using heat map, as you can see, it's restricted the deformation to just around the shoulder area. We've got a much nicer, well, deformation. I can check the uh, elbow again. Yep, these weights aren't perfect and I can just spot the edges, ends of the fingers which look a bit broken, but you're never going to get absolutely perfect weighting. What you're looking for is basically a good head start, so there's less cleanup. Look at our bicep twist. That rotates okay. So a lot of this we probably don't need to touch. Apart from the odd tweaks where it maybe pinches too much here and there. Let's just raise that arm back up. As you can see, the fingertips have been missed off. So it may be that we just we could maybe adjust the uh heat map fall off perhaps um, and then redo it and just see what that sort of uh, result that gives us but let's have a look at the fingers now now if you've used uh, smooth skinning before you'll know that if you with a default skinning if I rotate the finger here it's going to affect the finger here which we'll see in a second but by using heat map that's just given us a nice head start yes we have the uh, vertices at the end of the finger here which need adjusting but a little tip if you have areas like this where we know all that is going to be weighted to the front of the finger there what we can do is select those vertices go to our component editor let's just bring that down here if we select smooth skin we can see here are our selected vertices and here are the weights to each joint. So that finger is the index finger. So we don't want any influence on any other fingers so let's just select that, press 1 and let's move that down there. Let's just zero this out here and zero that out there. So that's just weighted that completely to the end of the finger there and we didn't have to mess about painting weights. So that's another option for going in and just fixing those odd stray vertices on the end of the finger. So that's heat map, so let's just uh, undo all that. Blah, 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 blah. There we go. So 
if you haven't got this version of Maya, let's just go down the traditional route. Select your joint route, select your skin, go to skin, edit smooth skin, uh, bind skin, smooth bind. Let's just reset those settings. What we're going to do, joint hierarchy, we're going to leave these exactly as they are. Maximum influences, we'll set that to two again. Drop off rate 10. So we're just using the classic linear skinning method. Let's bind the skin. Let's see what the results are by just using that. And here, this is the, what we're getting now. This is what you probably normally see when you do your uh, binding. But basically, the shoulder is influencing a lot of the area under here. And if we go back to the fingers, we'll see. Well, that's actually not not too bad. Well, that's quite surprising. So that has worked quite well on those fingers. So you've bound your skin. And now we need to go in and fix the weighting. And the weighting is basically how much each vertex is weighted to each joint. So if we look, if we use this jaw as an example, at the moment the bottom jaw doesn't uh, move with that joint, the whole bottom of her face moves with the joint. And what I like to do, I'm just going to turn off keys because I don't want to add any keys by accident here. Let's just rotate the head up, rotate the jaw down, Let's just hide those eyes and things for now. And that bottom jaw. What we're going to do is go in and edit these weights so that the mouth is restricted to the bottom jaw and the head is just restricted to the head jaw. Uh, the shoulder is just more restricted to the shoulder and so on and so on. So to do this, we're just going to go to skin, edit smooth skin, Paint Skin Wakes tool. Let's open this up. And you'll see our character has gone black apart from down here. And this is showing us the weight map of the root joint. So the whiter it is, the more influence the root has on those vertices. Let's just reset this tool that we've got as well. Sorry. So down here we have our list of joints. You can go through and you can see how each joint is influencing which section. So the upper spine here is influencing a little bit around the neck and a little bit on the chest. So if we bend her backwards, this is going to look a bit odd. So this is where we have to come in and paint the weights. And as you can see, I've got sort of a stylus moving over the surface of the model. And this is how we paint the weights. Just holding B down to make my... Um, holding B and clicking with my left mouse button to make my brush bigger. Uh, personally, there are lots of different ways to approach this. I just like to use a soft brush. Let's scroll down, have it set to replace. And what you can also do is just right click, select influence. So now I can see what the is being influenced by the jaw bone. Let's make a smaller brush in fact, let's select the head, set replace, and what this is going to do is just replace the current value with the one you're painting on there. Now, an opacity, well, basically the value of one uh, means it's going to be full, a uh, full influence. A value of zero is no influence. So you've sort of got adding and taking away there. The opacity is how strong this value is. So if I have an opacity of 1 and a value of 1, and I try painting, it's going to give us these vertices a value of 1. So they're going to be weighted to the head by a value of 1. Now I'm using a brush with a soft fall off. So the vertices around are gradually just going to get influenced by where I paint. If I select a harder brush, then you see that's more solid. So that's more a more definite uh, influence. So let's keep that harder brush because we want the head to be de all these vertices to be definitely influenced by the head. So we can go in and just quickly paint over these. Do the eyebrow as well. And 
And because we're using replace, we're just going in and just swapping one influence for another. And I'm only doing one side of the head because this model's symmetrical, we can mirror the weighting information across. And I'll demonstrate that as well in a second. So let's just quickly go in and I'm just going to open this mouth up. Now we've added the jaw, point, uh, jaw bone in so that we can open and close the jaw. Now you're probably wondering why we don't just do that with a blend shape. And I find that if we have the jaw bone in, it gives you a lot more freedom because you can have a blend shape, which is sort of a ooh uh, shape. But then with the jaw bone, you can open the mouth as well. So rather than being an ooh, it changes that to an ah without having to create lots of different blend shapes. So for this area here, we want this to sort of be between the head and the jaw. So this is where we start coming down and changing the we can either change the value to 0.5 and that will make that a solid half and half between. We select them there, that's just adding 0 0.5. But if we set that, leave that at 1 and change our opacity to maybe 0 0.5, it's just going to be adding half that value over and over again. So it'll gradually build up like that, you see. Let's just do the inside of the mouth here. Uh, that's it, just trying to see in there. Now you may get problems like this where you can't select the actual vert and that's because we have smooth mesh enabled. So if you press one, as you can see, this is a low poly proxy mesh. Press three, that's our lovely smooth mesh. So sometimes it's sort of working off where these vertices are here. We press three, that jumps up there, but may as when you're painting weights, it still thinks the vert is down here. So sometimes you just quickly press one, just go in and just adjust those. Maybe use a softer brush just so that we're pulling that out gradually like so. Press three again. But you get the general idea there. I'm not going to go on and paint the whole model. This is just to demonstrate an approach to painting the weights and fixing uh, those issues there. So if we select the jaw, and we want this to be fully influenced by that bone, so we go back down, opacity 1, value 1, and then we can go in and just make sure this area of the head is influenced like so. And we don't want this area influenced by the jaw, and we don't want this upper area here so now we can set a value of zero and then we can just turn that off there and that's all snapping back to the head so there we go just do inside the mouth here So that's looking better, we've got the jaw at the bottom, the head at the top, select the head again, as we can see we've just cleaned up that area. So let's say that's done. Let's quickly go back to our bind pose, so we'll go to skin, go to bind pose, that resets it back to the pose she was at when we uh, originally bound the skin. And what we're going to do is just skin, edit smooth skin mirror skin weights which is there so we're going to just like we did when we were mirroring our joints we're going to mirror across the yz plane positive to negative so it's going to take this side and mirror it across to this side if we deselect that obviously it's going to mirror the opposite way and because we've been working on her left hand side um, we want that information mirrored across we'll turn on normalize because we don't want any weights which are going to be accidentally go over one or below zero we're going to keep those clamped between zero and one um, we'll just keep closest point on surface click apply there we go so now fingers crossed we rotate the jaw it needs a bit of tidying up because I did just did a very quick job on it but you can see there 
it's also influencing the cheeks a little bit up here. But we've painted the weights on the bottom jaw there, and that works quite well. We've got a bit of tidying up to do, but we can go back in, use our paint weights tool, and just remove those areas there which are just slightly influenced by the jaw. What we can also do is go to our skin, edit smooth skin, I'll just tear this off. We can also go in and prune small weights. So if there's any anything that's influenced by a, jo a joint very, very slightly, like for example, these on the eye here, they may be influenced by the jaw by a very, very small amount. So we could just clean up the model just by doing this. So click apply, prune those very small weights. So those weights are obviously over this value, but we don't want to prune too much. Select the mesh, click apply. Now if you saw there, the mesh did change slightly where it was just removing those 0.1 weights. So sometimes it's nice to just go in and clean those up. So that is basically painting weights and basically getting your character attached to the model. So I'm just going to uh, load in a version which has had its weights pretty much done. So I'll be back in a second. So here's a character which has had a bit more time spent on her uh, waiting. See, we wrote it, we can open and close the jaw. We can rotate the head like so. We can do all sorts with her. She's now ready for us to start posing her and playing around with uh, getting her into different uh, poses and positions. Uh, the problem we have now though is trying to get her into a pose just by using these joints it's going to be difficult. Let's say we wanted to have her crouch down. We're now going to have to bend the knees up, try and get the feet and keep them planted on the floor which is an absolute nightmare. So we've got the skeleton, we've got the, mo the skeleton influencing the model. So what we're gonna do in the next video is apply a rig which will work on top of this skeleton and allow us to pose her much more, much easier uh, and, and in a much more easy and intuitive way.